on today's episode. I'm a sucker for vacuum cleaners, and I found this one lurking by the bin, and the kind people had even left the charger for it. I wonder what the problem is. We quickly check the charger, which I've plugged in. You can see it measuring here 9.9 .9 volts. Checking the label underneath, it says input 10 volts, 200 milliamps, and battery 7.2 volts. Let's plug it in and see what happens. Okay, so we have a red charging light. That's good. We'll commence the recording once the unit has charged. Well, it's been only a few minutes and the charge light has turned from red to green, indicating a full charge. Let's switch on and see what happens. Ah, well, clearly there's not very much capacity left in uh, whatever battery lurks inside. I guess it's time to take it apart and see what type of cell it is and if we can change it. There are just four screws holding the thing together and an additional screw here on the impeller housing. Let's see how it comes apart. Okay, so quite dusty, as we would expect. Fairly standard, what looks to be what we used to call back in the day a Mabuchi, probably 550 motor. No doubt this is some Chinese knockoff. And a battery pack. So removing the, the padding there, and not surprisingly, we can see it's a nickel metal hydride 1300 milliampere hour pack. My idea would be to replace this with lithium ion cells, which would mean we'd either have to modify or, or change the, the charger, but I think it's worth doing. A 2S pack, maybe with two in parallel, would give us a maximum of 8.4 volts, which I don't think should be a problem for the, for the system. Let's get on and try. I've given it a little bit of a clean up so that we can have a look at all the parts that we need. I notice on the back of the switchboard here there is a little component. Now looking at that under the microscope we can see that it's an LM358 which is a general purpose op-amp and it's most likely being used as a voltage comparator to switch the charge off once the nickel metal hydrides are, are charged. We clearly won't be using that, but we have the connections here for the switch, which is all that we're going to need. To replace this battery pack, what we need, I think, are two pairs of 18650 cells. These have been recovered from old laptop packs, but they're generally pretty good. I keep them in their pairs once I take them out of the battery packs. That way I know that they're well balanced. These particular cells are LG. I have some others which are Samsung and we'll do a, a quick test on these to make sure that they're good and select the best cells for the job. And I don't think there'll be any problem sitting those in there in place of the original pack. The other thing that will need to be changed is the charger. The original charger, as we saw, is only 10 volts at 200 milliampere hours, and to charge these lithium cells, we're going to need a dedicated charger. For that charger, I'm going to select this board, which I've used before. This is a TP5100 dedicated uh, lithium charger. This will charge either a single cell or two cells at up to 2 amps, so that's perfect. What it will need, however, is a 12 volt supply. I have a bunch of these 12 volt 2 amp supplies, so that's not going to be a problem either. Let's get on now and test these cells and select the appropriate ones to build a pack with. It's important that cells are matched when you're selecting them in terms of both voltage and internal resistance. And I've done a video on that subject. So I'm using this, this charger which can measure internal resistance as well. 
Let's look first at these LG cells. First one coming in there at 221 milliohms, 3.86 volts. And this one coming in at 136 milliohms, 3.99 volts. These are not terribly well matched. Let's look at our Samsung cells now. Seventy six milliohms, three point nine three volts, seventy six, and this one is eighty six milliohms and almost the same voltage. So, both in terms of voltage and internal resistance, these are the cells that I'm going to go for. I'll leave them now to charge up and just check the capacity at the end. Everything is fully charged now and I think I made the right decision. You can see here these cells which weren't very well matched with the internal resistance. Also this one 800 milliampere hours and this one 300 milliampere hours. They're not very close. On the other hand these two that were reasonably well matched and here the difference is around what is it 129 milliampere hours. So these are the cells we're going to go ahead with for sure. The transformation is complete. I've ended up putting the charger board on top of the old PCB here so that it can see the charge and charge complete LED. Originally I was going to use the original LED which as we saw is a dual green and red LED but when I tested on my tester we can see that it's in a common anode configuration and the circuit here drives common cathode. So that's been removed and we'll go into the spares box. Simply the charge connector now obviously connects to the board and I've done a full review of this board before so I won't go into the details here. And there's just the two connections out to the new battery pack to charge it and that obviously will drive the motor. Now if we attach our 12 volt charger, we can see the red LED indication coming on. When it reaches the charge condition, that will change to blue. We'll come back then. Now the charge indicator has changed to blue. We know the pack is fully charged. I'm going to disconnect the charger now, reassemble the unit and go and try it out. Here in the studio, I've just finished cutting my latest LP. <laughs> Let's clean up. Now that's one hell of a sucker, and I don't mean it's easily fooled.